Hello, my name is Susan Lampy. I'm an alumna of the School of Nursing and a member of the Heritage Committee. The attack on Pearl Harbor and America's entry into World War II brought about massive changes in the country. Yet the war did not interfere with the steady progress of the School of Nursing under the leadership of Catherine Densford. Rather, it strengthened Director Densford's resolve to contribute to the state and the nation through the school's strong academic and service missions. James Gray, a nursing historian, suggested that one way of estimating the value of the University of Minnesota School of Nursing is to examine the use made of its facilities and its personnel at a time of national emergency. The Heritage Committee created this video to demonstrate the value of the contributions of the University of Minnesota School of Nursing to America's efforts in World War II. The video highlights the military, civilian, and academic contributions of the faculty and alumni. This historical journey begins in early March of 1940, prior to the U.S. declaration of war. Dr. Harold S. Deal, Dean of Medical Sciences at the University of Minnesota, received a request from the War Department to organize a general hospital. The University of Minnesota response was to establish a mobile army unit called the 26th General Hospital, following in the tradition of the university-sponsored Base Hospital 26 of World War I. The 26th General Hospital was officially activated on February 1, 1942 at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. The 26th General Hospital required 120 nurses. Catherine Dansford was responsible for recommending a chief nurse and assisting with the recruitment of the nurses. Cecilia Hauge, an alumna of the School of Nursing, left her positions as associate professor at the School of Nursing and director of nursing at university hospitals when she was appointed chief nurse. Ms. Hauge served with the 26th General Hospital as it traveled from Oklahoma to England, North Africa, and Italy. She was awarded the Bronze Star for her service. The nurses who accompanied Ms. Hauge were recruited largely from the university hospitals and other parts of Minnesota. Major Hauge is fourth from left in this photo, and Captain Myrtle Kitchell, an alumna of the school, is fifth from left. When the U.S. entered the war in 1941, the National Nursing Council for War Service met to determine the most efficient use of nursing resources. The members of the council were representatives from the American Nurses Association, the National Association of Colored Graduate Nurses, the National League of Nursing Education, the National Organization for Public Health Nursing, the American Red Cross Nursing Service, and the Association of Collegiate Schools of Nursing. The Council asked the U.S. Public Health Service to determine the national nursing resources. Pearl McIver, an alumna of the University of Minnesota School of Nursing, was Senior Public Health Consultant for the U.S. Public Health Service. McIver directed a national survey of nurses. The survey, which was completed in 1941, indicated 290,000 RNs would be available and willing to serve in a military or civilian capacity. As nurses joined the military, the nursing needs of the United States civilian population were compromised. An enterprising response was required. More nurses were needed. In response to the need for nurses during the war years, the University of Minnesota School of Nursing alumni took action. 305 alumni served in the military, approximately one-eighth of its total graduates since the opening of the school in 1909. Florence Marks, in her history of the School of Nursing, said that in response to the need for more nurses, 
the faculty had the attitude of not can it be done, but rather how best can we do it. With this attitude, School of Nursing increased annual enrollment from 285 students in 1939 to 982 students in 1944. Faculty developed a program for college graduates so they could complete the requirements for nursing in two and a half years instead of three years. And they implemented a refresher course for inactive public health nurses so they could replace those registered nurses who wanted to serve in the war effort. As military recruitment continued to reduce the number of graduate nurses in civilian hospitals, it was clear that more nurses were needed overall. The federal government responded in 1943 by passing Public Law 74, the Bolton Act, creating the United States Nurse Cadet Corps. The act was named in honor of U.S. Representative Francis Payne Bolton, Republican of Ohio. The act provided government funds to accredited schools for adequate facilities and personnel to produce nurses for military and civilian needs. Cadet students received tuition, fees, uniforms, and a monthly stipend. They agreed to work in civilian or military facilities for the duration of the war. From July 1943 to July 1948, the program graduated 124,065 nurses from 1,125 schools of nursing across the country. Lucille Petrie, a faculty member, left the School of Nursing to become a nurse education consultant for the U.S. Public Health Service. In 1943, she became the head of the Division of Nurse Education. Ms. Petrie was appointed the founding director of the Nurse Cadet Corps under the supervision of the Surgeon General. The University of Minnesota School of Nursing responded to the Bolton Nurse Cadet Corps Act by enrolling a total of 1,640 Cadet Corps students between 1943 and 1946. This was more than any other school of nursing in the country. In fact, in November of 1943, Director Densford and the School of Nursing received recognition during halftime at the Iowa-Minnesota football game. A telegram from United States Surgeon General Thomas Perran stated, Congratulations to the School of Nursing at the University of Minnesota for the magnificent effort it is making towards winning of the war. Another federal response to the need for nurses occurred when President Roosevelt feared a massive wave of combat casualties when Japan was invaded in 1945. He recommended a military draft for nurses. Catherine Densford, as president of the American Nurses Association, testified to the Military Affairs Committee of the House of Representatives in February 1945. She described the successful efforts of nursing organizations to provide adequate numbers of registered professional nurses through 1944. In addition, Director Densford stated that if a draft of nurses was necessary, it would be only the first step in the drafting of all women. She suggested an alternate plan for efficient processing of volunteers, additional funding and resources, and an organized plan for intensive recruitment. With the rapid collapse of Germany early in 1945 and the limitation of the war in the Pacific to a few islands, the draft was not needed and was never enacted. Many members of the faculty of the School of Nursing volunteered their services to the war effort. For example, Thelma Dodds became a U.S. Public Health Service nurse education consultant. Eugenia Taylor was a field college counselor for the National Nursing Council for War Service, and she taught Red Cross classes for the Volunteer Nurses Aid Committee. Ruth Harrington served as a member of several national nursing committees, including the Committee on Post-War Planning of the National Nursing Council for War Service. 
while many faculty up at the School of Nursing left for the war effort, remaining and newly hired faculty developed and taught curricula in the Cadet Nursing Program, the Basic Professional Nursing Program, the Refresher Courses, and the Program for Students with a Baccalaureate Degree in a Non-Nursing Major. At the same time, Director Densford and the faculty expanded curricula and student services in the context of World War II. First, in 1943, the School of Nursing, assisted by federal funds, developed a clinical course in rural nursing for its basic professional students. The faculty recognized there was a limited amount of nursing care available to people living in rural areas. In addition, establishing a clinical experience for students in a rural hospital expanded their learning by introducing them to the operations of the smaller hospital and helped the students see more clearly the importance of family relationships in the care of patients. The program had an added benefit of introducing students to the possibility of choosing to work in a rural hospital after graduation. The instructor, Mabel Larson Roach, developed the three-month experience using two small hospitals in rural areas. The experience was converted into a senior cadet affiliation for students in the U.S. Cadet Nurse Corps. Five rural hospitals and most of the nursing schools in Minnesota participated in the senior cadet program. The school gained a national reputation for the rural nursing program. Secondly, as enrollment rapidly increased and student problems became more complex, Director Densford recognized the need for student guidance and counseling. In January 1944, H. Phoebe Gordon returned to the school. Miss Gordon became a full-time School of Nursing student counselor. This position was established through Cadet Nurse Corps funds. In addition, to prepare for the care of veterans who had served in World War II, the School of Nursing answered a request from the American Psychiatric Association. The school agreed to be the first school of nursing to conduct advanced psychiatric education for registered nurses. Ione Slow was added to the faculty to develop the program. In 1944, the School of Nursing, the College of Medical Sciences, Mayo Clinic, and the Rochester State Hospital worked in close partnership to provide registered nurses with this experience. In summary, the wartime emergency may have been one of the most challenging times for Catherine Densford, the faculty and alumni of the University of Minnesota School of Nursing. They answered the challenge by serving in the 26th General Hospital and all branches of the military. They provided leadership with the National Survey of Nursing Resources, then dramatically increased student enrollment to provide more nurses needed for the military, the Cadet Corps, and in the U.S. They enhanced the profession through developing pioneering curricula and student resources. This video highlights evidence that during the war years, a time of national emergency, the School of Nursing met the challenges and were valuable contributors to the nation.